As part of the way forward, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, led by Premier Dwight Ball, announced that we, we would be positioning the province globally as the preferred location for oil and gas development. Our government listens to and respects the work of industry associations, and we took the advice of NOIA, who in their document, Redefining Oil, suggested the development of an industry council. The Oil and Gas Industry Development Council was formed just over a year ago and began its work. And as chair of the council, I've worked closely with an extraordinary group of professionals who were chosen through the independent appointments process based on their knowledge, skill, abilities in the offshore Newfoundland and Labrador. With incredible expertise and determination, the council started the process of developing a plan for growth in the industry. As innovators, entrepreneurs, investors, operators, and developers, the sense of opportunity and urgency was understood. Over 150 industry leaders were engaged in the review and development of this action plan. All stakeholders, operators, supply and service industry, labor, educators, and federal and provincial gut departments worked together. To ensure success, we need a competitive global position built on modern, efficient governance structure, including the efficient regulatory process, attractive fiscal policy, optimal infrastructure planning, and a collaborative approach. We need increased supply and service sector capabilities that align with and capitalize on our energy future. We need a highly competent, technical, agile, professional workforce that leverages our resource developments and forms a foundation for broader economic activity. An industry that recognizes the value of gender equity and diversity, the innovation strength that comes from inclusivity and increasing the participation of underrepresented groups and an innovation ecosystem that supports technology development, industry growth, diversification, and exports. The time is now to advance this opportunity. Under the leadership of Premier Dwight Ball and his vision for a stronger tomorrow, he has planned the way forward. His support, guidance, encouragement, and commitment has led to this moment and helps ensure the bold vision of a stronger, larger oil and gas industry will become a reality. Premier Ball has been clear in his resolve to see Newfoundland and Labrador as a global leader in offshore oil and gas exploration and development. I'd also like to recognize the support and encouragement of, of the Cabinet and my caucus colleagues, who many of whom are here today, and I thank them for that support. It's my great honor to ask Premier Ball to come forward to officially launch our plan for growth in the oil and gas industry in Newfoundland and Labrador. Please give a warm welcome to Premier Ball. Well, good morning, everyone. Well, Gordon took the opportunity to inform us. Jim took the opportunity to tease us. <laughs> and all, throughout all of that, Seamus and I were just sat back there listening with Siobhan. And I'm looking at this view outside our window today, and I get the opportunity to think about our history. And just look around. Just look around for like 15 seconds or so. You see oil and gas industry here, you see Single Hill, you see the big part of the history of our province right here in this beautiful, beautiful facility right here at the rooms and it all comes together uh, in this meeting that we're having here today. So it's, I'm so pleased to see such a great crowd of people here today and stakeholders who represent industry. All of you play such an important role into the future of our province. We have our federal colleagues, some to my left, some to my right. Our provincial colleagues, as Siobhan has said, over here sitting down. We have offshore operators, we have companies with exploration interests, supply and service companies. We have people here from ports, from our municipalities, labor groups, education groups, training and research institutions. Just about every single person in this room is touched profoundly by the future of our offshore industry. So as Siobhan said, today we are here to launch details of our plan for growth in our oil and gas industry. We started this process about a year ago when we announced the way forward, which is our vision for sustainability and growth for Newfoundland and Labrador. At that time, as has been said already, that we committed to positioning this province globally as a preferred location for oil and gas development. 
And we recognized that a collaborative approach was needed to develop a vision of action and a plan for growth. As Siobhan had said, it was Noya who brought up the idea of establishing an oil and gas industry development council, this to advise us on the way forward for our industry. We both felt that a collaborative approach was critical to ensuring resources are developed in a matter that will result in a su sustainable industry. We all agreed. It is chaired by the Minister of Natural Resources, Minister Siobhan Cody. The Oil and Gas Industry Development Council has been dedicated to an important task of envisioning the future of the oil and gas industry in our province. So I thank them for their tremendous input into a process that will mean so much to the future of our province. We all know that the oil and gas industry contributes already substantially to our economy. Since 1997, we have produced some 1.7 billion barrels of oil. But this equates to, in dollars and cents, to some $19.8 billion in cumulative royalties for this province. In fact, we produce 25% of Canada's conventional light crude. The resource potential, as Jim has already said, in our offshore is incredible. Less than 7% licensed and over 650 leads and prospects have been identified to date. Giovanna said that we have seven new entrants in the past two years, and it's already been mentioned that $2.6 billion in recent exploration work commitments. In just two areas, the West Orphan and the Flemish Pass, our resource potential, 37.5 billion barrels of oil and nearly 134 cubic feet of natural gas. But we are at a critical point in our industry. We have grown significantly as a result of the investments in infrastructure, investments in technology, and the expertise that we have in this room. The very difficult offshore environment has been met with determination and innovative solutions. There is tremendous exploration and resource development potential over the next decade. So to realize our potential, we know we have to overcome some challenges, which include being competitive always at the global level. Ladies and gentlemen, we have risen to the top of the ranks in the global playing field in 2017, it was the Fraser Institute who ranked us fourth globally when they did a jurisdictional scan of some 97 senior petroleum executives. In 2016, we were ranked 25th. So we have some momentum. But it is a key priority to remain competitive and increase exploration activity to build on the interest that is created by the positive, as Jim said, the seismic work undertaken over the past few years. I've said this time and time again, as have many of our industry players in this room today, we need an environmental assessment process that allows us to responsibly deliver our oil and gas industry, and we need to provide the necessary certainty to attract that investment. Last week, the federal government introduced the proposed changes to SIA. Now yet the full impact of these changes have not been identified yet, but we will be working closely with our federal colleagues over the next year to get those regulations in place. But what we do know is that a new federal agency, the Impact Assessment Agency, will lead on environmental assessments. The federal gov government has assured us that the proposed legislation will have tighter timelines. You all know, we know, that is something that you have asked for, that we have asked for, and I can assure you all our MPs have asked for. Now I just want to take a moment to acknowledge our MPs who are in Ottawa advancing our concerns. MP O'Regan has been very active in representing our province's interests during this process and I thank him as well as his colleagues for their tenacity and their drive to keep this province front and center during the review. The federal government has acknowledged a role for CNLOPB and the new Impact Assessment Agency for Canada for these projects. This is very important and a welcoming statement to our province. Again, this is something that we have all stressed for at every single opportunity in the conversations that we have had. 
Now we will learn more about this new approach for regulation, the united approach for ministry, our associations, our MPs, and the provincial government, we must continue to work collaboratively. There is a significant amount of work yet to be done and we must make sure that as a group we continue to provide our input and our expertise into these processes and share our local perspectives. It will require ongoing discussion. It will require a strong partnership and commitment. As we have already said from this group as we developed our plan for the future of oil and gas for this province. Most recently, we have also seen the type of collaboration from the federal government on the Supercluster Initiative. Seamus and I will be leaving just in a couple hours and going to Moncton to have further discussions on that. We've seen collaboration with the Atlantic Growth Strategy and other partnering initiatives. We have proven that by working together, we can achieve great things. And I have every confidence that we can maximize the benefits of the vast potential off our coast. We are up for the challenge. And today we are launching Advance 2030, which is an action plan for growth in the oil and gas industry. Our vision is for Newfoundland and Labrador to be the internationally preferred location for oil and gas exploration, for development driven by an innovative, sustainable local industry that is globally competitive, environmentally responsible, and maximizes the benefits for Newfoundland and Labrador. By 2030, we envision over 100 new exploration wells drilled, multiple basins producing at 650,000 barrels of oil per day, shortened time from prospectivity to production, employment of over 7,500 people, a robust, innovative global supply and service sector, very important for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, a commercial gas industry, renewables, and oil and gas integrated as a world-class energy cluster. And Gordon spoke about that. These are ambitious but achievable goals. So to advance our vision, we must continue to collaborate. I invite each and every one of you to be an active part of building our oil and gas industry for the future of Newfoundland and Labrador. We now have a short video that I want to play, but I will say we can wait no longer. We are at a critical point. The time for action is now. Thank you very much.